Thank you, President Harrison. And to the Cal State University Northridge, class of 2016, congratulations on your graduation. That's why we're all here today. Today is a special day. It's your day. And all of us on stage and in the audience have the privilege to formally recognize the honors that you've earned and all that you have achieved. Today is also the ceremonial end of one phase of your life and the beginning of the next. Soon, you will be liberated to join the workforce. Now, the bad news is that historical career pathways have been completely disrupted and there are no longer clearly defined roadmaps for what it takes to be successful, or even what success means. However, the really good news is that historical career pathways have been completely disrupted, and there are no longer clearly defined roadmaps for what it takes to be successful. This means you are free of all of the confinements that defined the way most people pursued a career before, and you are perfectly positioned to take maximum advantage of this disruption, because you're just starting out. You can take risks, be aggressive, innovate to succeed, and rebound quickly when you fail. And you will fail, but that's okay. The start of your career is when you have the least to lose and the most to learn. It's also when you figure out what really motivates you, the nature of your operating ethics, and your own personal definition of success. Now, to figure this out, you've got to be clear about what matters most to you. Is it about doing work which you have a passion or having financial security and material wealth? Is it about leaving a legacy or creating a loving family? Is it about recognition, building something of your own, or just winning? Is it finding a work-life balance or helping others and changing the world for the better? It's unlikely it's just one of these things, and instead a unique combination rooted in your own personal life experience, your education, and your dreams for the future. Now, figuring this out isn't simple because the mind is not always in alignment with the heart. This is something I discovered around your age. What I thought was important in my life was not the same as what I felt. My career awakening occurred early in college and pretty much all of my operating and leadership ethics crystallized in my first job. As you heard, like many of you, I grew up in the Valley. I went to Birmingham High School down the street where I was a major band geek. And after high school, I went to UCLA because I thought I wanted to be a lawyer. Now, lawyers make good money. They have job security. And these are both qualities I, in a profession, I assumed were important to my parents. While I was enjoying my freshman year, I found that if I had any spare time, I would rush from Westwood, just down the street, to Kennedy High School, where I would volunteer as the assistant marching band director. I loved working with students and realized I just couldn't pursue a career in law. I had to become a music teacher. Now, once I made that decision, I wanted to get the best training possible, so I needed to go to one of the best music and education schools in the country. So goodbye, Bruins, and hello, Matadors. When I told my dad about my plans, I vividly remember him asking, will this work make you happy? And I told him teaching is a high unlike anything I'd ever experienced before. And without hesitation, he said, do it and never look back. Now, what made that interesting to me is he went on to tell me for the first time that he never really loved his work and wondered what might have been if he hadn't taken the more traditional and sensible path. Knowing that he had spent his entire life working without enjoyment in order to provide financial stability for his family had an indelible effect on me. I resolved at that moment to only pursue jobs in which I couldn't wait to go to work, and my first job was that way. As soon as I graduated, I became the music teacher at Carson High School in South LA, and here I am, a 21-year-old, white, middle-class, valley kid, whose life experience was without serious challenges, heading off to be the new band director of a music program that had been closed down after the band director quit, the band room ransacked, and all the music instruments stolen. In addition, I would be teaching students from a social, economic, and ethnic background of which I had little experience. I couldn't have been more naive about the realities of the job. But looking back, this wasn't a bad thing. 
as it allowed me to approach my work boldly and take risks without even realizing I was doing so at the time. My vast inexperience was offset by confidence in my music and teaching skills and a passion bordering on obsession for the work. I can tell you from experience that deeply caring about what you do excuses early career blunders. I learned this from the students. They can quickly decipher if a teacher's interest in them is authentic. If it is, they forgive mistakes. If it isn't, they put up barriers. And even if it neg negatively affects them, they will stop you from being successful. It's no different than the people you will be working with and for. If you don't believe in what you are doing, then neither will the people around you. Yes, you can fake it for a short while, but that's not sustainable. So do work that allows you not to act with passion, but to be passionate. Now, as teachers go, my passion manifested itself strongly, as I was a pretty demanding teacher. I did not care that in a few years the students built that program into one of the largest and most celebrated in California. We could do better, win more competitions, earn more scholarships, and every student had to get the grades to get into college. So I set very high standards with little regard to the challenges my students were facing. And when they didn't give it their best shot, I made them run laps, practice more, complete additional homework. I was hard, so much so that one year I'd had enough of always being the bad guy and decided no more. If students were late, absent, not focused, or not finished at the end of practice, no worries. No calls to the parents, no punishment. I'd be the cool teacher for a change. But after a couple of weeks, the student leaders asked for a meeting after practice. They demanded to know what was wrong. I, I said nothing. It was the other way around, that I had pushed them too hard, and it wasn't fair to them. And they explained to me at length and in a very respectful way how they felt, which summarized with something along the lines of, Mr. Burke, we like you, but you really aren't that smart. You know, They explained that pushing them to do better is how they knew I really believed in them. And they hated how often people would lower expectations because of where they live or what they look like. That self-awareness hit me like a ton of bricks. I learned that people don't want to just get by. They want to excel. And for that to happen, you have to push beyond normal expectations, even when it's uncomfortable for you. The relentless pursuit of excellence is a defining characteristic of success and leads to advancement. However, this attribute is greatly diminished if it isn't practiced with empathy. Now, at Carson, I had a student named Fao, whose large family moved to the U.S. a few years earlier from Samoa. Despite the fact that he had no formal training, he was a natural musician, and if he applied himself, he could have earned a full scholarship to college. Fao was the nicest kid you would ever meet. He was a gentle giant, literally and physically. He was also chronically late, literally and physically. The way I saw it, he was lazy, and that didn't fly with me. So I did what I assumed would have been done to me. I called his parents. And I explained how disappointed I was in his behavior. And after I finished, the only words they said were, thank you for calling, we're very sorry, it will not happen again. Well, I was feeling very proud of the way I handled the situation. And the next morning, Fowl came up to me, apologized, and promised to do better. But I noticed as he was turning away, he had a bruise on his arm and another on his face. Later that day, I learned from other students that in his culture, the teacher is a highly respected person. And Fao had brought disrespect to his family by having caused a teacher to call them. As a result, there were consequences, largely caused by my ignorance about his culture and family dynamics. This taught me to first seek to understand and then be sensitive to the social, economic, racial, and cultural influences of the people I worked with. Fortunately for you, you are far more evolved in this area than I was at your age, because Los Angeles and Cal State University Northridge are now such wonderfully diverse environments. You already understand that the world is not monochromatic, and you can appreciate all the benefits of working in an environment which promotes diversity and fosters a culture of empathy. And this is a good thing. It's a competitive, competitive advantage for you because there's a direct link between job satisfaction and working in an inclusive atmosphere. Now, ultimately, teaching gave me that extraordinary sense of satisfaction. I felt like I was connected to people in a meaningful way, and I learned that life is more fulfilling when you incorporate public service into your professional and personal life. This doesn't mean you have to become a teacher or work in a nonprofit. 
but working for the social good should be part of what you do. Every job has or can have ways to integrate social impact into your work. If you don't, you won't be able to make a difference. Find a way and create them. Now, the one thing I did not do in my first job is think about what I needed to do to get my next job. I just focused all my energy into my work and opportunities organically availed themselves that I could not have manufactured no matter how much I tried to plot and plan my career. When you're passionate about your work, you're happy. And when you're happy, you're optimistic. And your mind frees you to innovate and create. And this will affect the people around you, including those who will propel your career forward. As President Harrison so kindly mentioned, my career path has been unique, which is a kind word for really odd and strange. I've been a teacher, a school administrator, a music executive, and over the past 24 year, years, CEO of restaurant, hotel, education, and entertainment companies. Now, working across several industries was somewhat uncommon for my time, but it's different now. Many of you are more likely to span several types of work because your priorities are different than my generation and the world is changing much more quickly. Generational change is, well, it's no longer generational. Remember a parent or grandparent talking about what they didn't have growing up, and at some point they'd say, in my day, and you would look at them and think how weird it must have been to grow up without all those things and that they were kinda old. Now, think about how old you were just 10 years ago, a little over 10 years in 2004. Most of you, were in your teens. Now think of the things that you didn't have in your day because they hadn't even been invented yet. GPS, YouTube, Google Maps, podcasts didn't happen until 2005. Blu-ray, Twitter, the first stadium seating in movie theaters wasn't until 2006. The first Kindle and iPhones hit the market in 2007. Kickstarter and Android phones didn't appear until 2008. Uber didn't exist seven years ago. It launched in 2009. Snapchat is only four years old. So I bet anyone in this audience who's in their early teens or younger is thinking, wow, the graduating class of 2016 is really old. <laughs> so welcome to the new normal. Global warming isn't the only thing disrupting established patterns. Technological advances now have a multiplier effect on the speed of innovation. The result is a workforce that is in a constant state of flux, and you are the first generation that has to deal with this new normal. Now, over the fat past decade, I experienced this firsthand in the film business, where virtually every aspect of the industry underwent, underwent some form of disruption. Many who resisted suffered, but those who saw disruption as an opportunity to innovate prospered. During this time, Participant Media partnered on some over 60 feature films, and we had the honor of working with Steven Spielberg on several movies, including Lincoln and last year's Bridge of Spies. When Bridge of Spies was filming, I had a chance to visit the set, and during a break, Steven was talking about the speed of technological advances in the viewing of films and other media. He was excited about how those changes would allow him to expand how he could tell stories. I was struck by how one of the greatest filmmakers of all time, who had no reason to change the way he approached his work, was so open to evolving the ways he creates his art. He went on to predict that in 10 years, the way we will make and consume media won't just be incrementally better than today, it will be in ways that have not even been invented yet. And I think this worldview is dead on. Old paradigms of one job for long periods, one profession for your entire career, set pathways for everyone to follow or make money or disappearing, and being replaced with a dynamic work environment. You can no longer think about incremental changes to the current way we do business. Changes now occur at a hyper rate, and the products, companies, and jobs are evolving, disappearing, and being replaced with new ones at an unprecedented speed. This is why you have to approach your career with flexibility and be willing to embrace constant change. And I know this can feel daunting at times, but it's also empowering and it's liberating. Not knowing what's next means that you have endless opportunities and nothing is set in stone. This means that it's now easier to pursue a career path ta tailored to your own unique definition of success. So seek out work that allows you to enjoy every step of the journey, 
so that every job you have is the best job you've ever had. Remember, going there is as much fun as getting there. So for those of you who think you know exactly what you're going to do for the rest of your life sitting in these chairs today, guess what? Most likely you won't be doing it. So buckle your seatbelt, throw your hands in the air, and enjoy the roller coaster ride. And for those of you who don't know yet, don't panic. You don't need to have it all worked out today. Either way, your professional life will progress nicely if you do something that you are willing to dedicate yourself to completely. It doesn't really matter what the job is, just approach whatever you do with passion. Opportunities that you never thought possible will organically reveal themselves. When I graduated, I looked at my studies at Cal State Northridge as a means to an end. But over the years, I gained an appreciation for this school because my time here was much more than just taking classes to earn a degree. Yes, CSUN gave you the academic foundation and confidence to move forward professionally. But your time here will be remembered as so much more. Think about the freedom that you enjoyed, certain professors that changed you, the friendships you formed, and the personal growth that you experienced. Over time, this is what you will come to appreciate and remember with fondness. My last observation is about the champions in your life. You are the most distinguished graduates of this university and have reached a milestone in academic achievement. You have a right and should be very proud of yourselves. But no matter how pleased you are with yourselves for reaching this academic high point, there are people who are even more proud. They are the ones who love, supported, and sacrificed you. Class of 2016, look around at the moms, dads, brothers, sisters, grandparents, and friends who are all here today to celebrate your success. Take a moment to really tell them how much they mean to you. And don't be shy, because no matter how much you say, when you look back, it will never feel like it was enough. I promise you, their happiness is what you will remember most about today. Class of 2016, congratulations again on your success at Cal State University Northridge and on your graduation with honors. Best wishes for a career that matters, a life of purpose, and in making the place, the world, a better place to live. Thank you.